Today I have a trio of Mora knives I'd like to review for you. Um, Mora knives come out of Sweden and they are a fantastic value. They're probably the best value in knives, at least that I've seen. All these knives individually were under $20. This one was $10 and this is my most used knife that I own, I, I imagine, other than maybe my Swiss Army knife. but. Yeah, of my fixed blades, this is the most used that I have, so that, that says something. Uh, what a great value they are. So I'll start with this one. This is the Mora Number 1, also called the Mora Classic Number 1. It's got a birch handle, as they all do. And a carbon steel blade of 3 and 3 quarter inches. It's advertised at 4 inches, but it measures 3 and 3 quarters. They, now, now being the the low price that they are, you do have a few sacrifices like if I can get you good lighting on it you can see it's got kind of a rough finish right here which actually makes it really good if you're working with with flint uh, to start a, a fire but but it doesn't have that polish you get if you were to spend a little more on a knife um, to me I don't I don't care at all that's fine <coughs> excuse me but it's worth noting that, that they are a, a cheaper production knife, but are also a great value. So you, you don't get a lot looks-wise, but you sure do get a lot in terms of performance. Um, they have this gap right here, which is filled in now with super glue because uh, it's a carbon blade and I didn't want water getting in, in there to rust it. So that, that's something, that's not my idea actually, somebody else recommended that and I think it's a great idea on these. It's a cheap uh, little modification to make this knife just a little bit, a little bit better. So that has a Scandi grind on it, you know, so it goes constantly all the way to the end. There's no secondary bevel right towards the end, which means it's really easy to sharpen. How easy? I take my Arkansas stone, a little guy like this. They're they're not too expensive, and it's real portable, so you can take this backpacking. I put oil on it use any kind of oil really but I use linseed oil and uh, or olive oil is a good choice actually I've, I've done that and the reason I I like doing that is because I don't have to carry cooking oil as well as something for my blades it just works for both so anyway the scanty grind it just lays flat on the stone which makes it really easy to sharpen you don't have to have any reasonable amount of coordination even you just lay it flat like like so, if that's even visible. And then you just, and you get a very sharp blade. So that is the Moore number one. It's a fantastic knife, I love it. And they, the, um, the tang that goes through them is, is kind of like a, a stick type tang. And they do go through pretty much to the end. You can't see it on this one, but on these, you can see the tang goes through all the way to the end. So they're pretty strong, I haven't had any issues. Um, I've used them fairly hard. I would say batoning is probably a bad idea, but it's a pretty small knife to baton with anyway. So this is a carving knife. It's got a two and a quarter inch laminate blade with a really hard center. I think it's like 61 or 62 Rockwell hardness. So it holds a great edge in it and you can put a very, very fine edge on that. It's a close up view of it so you can see the laminated uh, edge right there. And then there's there's the the tang poking through. So this is a fantastic carving knife. I use it for this, this spoon actually, and for a, a chest that I'm working on. And and it works real good. You don't get you don't get that exhaustion uh, from having to push through the wood. It's a much more enjoyable experience. And then this is the hook knife or crook knife or curved knife, whatever you want to call it, for uh, carving out. Like, like this spoon or, or a bowl. So these are really handy, although kind of a specialist item. And the, the blade on this one, what makes it better than the one I used to use, this guy right here, is that it's uh, beveled on the outside, so it's really easy to sharpen, or really easy for, for a funky shaped knife, because you can just kind of work small circles all around the outside of that bevel. This one's beveled on the inside. This is actually for horse hooves, so 
it, it's, it's horrible. It didn't work very well at all. It's frustrating to use. And you can't sharpen it with a stone because you have to sharpen the inside of the blade. So that's the mores. Uh, the sheaths are something that has to be mentioned because when you spend ten dollars for a knife you're gonna have to make some sacrifices. And one of them for this knife in particular is the sheath. It's, it's pretty cruddy. It basically it's just one piece of plastic with a a belt loop that's too thin for anything but maybe a tiny little woman's belt or something. And the retention system is basically, you, you smack, well, smack the camera. <laughs> but you just smack it and it wedges in. Which actually does work, but it's, yeah, it's not great. This one was, was laughable because as it came, it was this long. And the blade sat in about this far. So you had like two inches of extra bulk for no good reason. So I just cut it and now I, I stick it in the end just drop it in there and it wedges in and it it makes it shorter so no unnecessary bulk. So these knives kinda need a little bit of modification not to work well but just to be just to rough out some of their edges so to speak. But they are absolutely great values and I highly recommend them. I'm sure all of their knives are great. Based on having three of their knives, I can say that, that they make a quality product. And uh, this this is actually my, my number one woods knife that I take. There's a certain very popular reviewer on eBay who advocates uh, large knives. And I actually really like his reviews. You probably know who I'm talking about. I think he does a great job with, with his reviews and, and all his videos. But I do disagree with, with him that... Uh, He's, he, he made the statement that anybody who doesn't carry a large knife into the woods is, is probably an armchair warrior or one of those terms that he uses. Which, which I think is kind of funny because, you know, a knife like this is the kind of thing he's talking about. Probably better quality than this. This is a pretty cruddy knife. But for, the, for uh, roughly the same weight as carrying one of those real big knives and a saw, I can carry this hatchet, this knife, which is a practically negligible weight, and also a folding saw. And I think that you get more functionality because you get the, the finer carving, fish cleaning, those kind of things, food prep abilities of, of a smaller knife. And you, you don't lose anything in wood splitting or chopping with, with a hatchet. If you know how to use a hatchet, uh, they're just as functional. So, yeah, I tend to disagree there, which is why I advocate this knife. Uh, because, it, I mean, it's horrible for chopping. You couldn't chop anything with this. Maybe some grass. But with that system, you can incorporate a, a knife like this, and it's awesome. I, that, that meets all of my needs when I go out in the woods. I don't ever cut down really big trees or anything like that, so that, that fully meets my needs. And uh, so anyway, that's a big digression, but I just wanted to make that point that that's how you can can really incorporate a smaller knife that can do those nice smaller tasks and still be able to split your wood and stuff. Just remember the hatchet. It's been around a long time. It's a proven tool, no matter what anybody says. So these are the Mora knives. They are fantastic. I recommend them. And they are, besides just being good knives, they're a great value.